everyone, welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in this video, we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects, as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, we have the Village Scenario Book. As always, you can find the files in both languages in the description of the video, as well as in the Kickstarter update. Starting off with the first scenario, the offensive against Plymouth, a lot of paragraphs were touched up and rewritten to improve readability and getting you ready to play faster. Moving on to the Wild Beasts scenario, the first thing we've done is swap the player numbers around. We also rebalanced the scenario by giving more control over your actions and increasing the number of orders. Now, in light of the new updated rulebook, we also added in an extra rule for the new big attack that the beasts can perform by making it easier for the beasts to kill animals, but not letting them devour them and gain victory points. Check out the revamped scenario book for more details. Moving on to Solomon Kane, before we start with the Act 2, of the Witches of Salem, a short update on production. We've sent the production files for both languages. Now, a process has started that takes between two and four weeks to have the digital proofs sent to us from the factory. And when we have more news, we will, of course, let you know, but bear in mind the above time frame of about two to four weeks. Now, last week, we left our Puritan in the swamps outside the town of Salem, close to a hut. Now, as he gets to the hut, Solomon meets a monk. Shortly thereafter, strange things begin happening in the foggy swamp. Shadows come alive and dance. Beautiful fairies turn into terrifying hags. Now, having found nothing of importance looking around the swamp, Solomon decides to go back to the hut. And then both he and the monk make their way to the city of Salem. What will happen to our Puritan? Well, at this point, you will encounter different versions of the story and branching paths depending on the choices you've made until now in the story. So what will your story look like? On to Super Fantasy Brawl, the factory informed us that next week they will be ready to ship to us the print proof copy. This is exciting news as we will soon have in our hands a final quality copy of the game. Now, please note, this does not mean that production is not happening in between now and then. Games are being produced and the factory is going to send us the very first complete game that is finished from their production line. This gives us the chance to review the final quality of the game. Now, we've already done that once before, but only with the white samples and the print proofs that were sent to us. This time, we'll see how the final game will look when it ends up on your table. Theoretically, this also gives us one final chance to make sure no mistakes have occurred. Now, what this means is, is that it's highly possible that the next update will have pictures of an actual production copy of the game. Are you looking forward to it as much as we are? I sure hope so. Exciting news for Enchanters this week. Production will be launching soon. We're aiming at launching production within the month of July. We're currently finishing the translation of the French files, and the only thing that remains is finalizing the design of the neoprene mat based on the factory specifications. Well, this process shouldn't take long, so we'll be sending the files to the factory within this month. And this means that we will be able to start the processing and creation of the digital proofs soon. And we are very happy with how things are in motion. This means that we are very hopeful that if everything goes according to plan and no disruptions happen, then we will be in line to meet the September delivery deadline. Moving on to Steam Watchers, the testing JB and Severine have made on the core box had us rewording some sentences to clarify how certain scenario mechanics worked. We also tweaked a few things to make every new mechanic enticing without breaking the game. The scenarios allow you to sprinkle your game with a pinch of extra rules in order to customize your experience. You want more incentive to fight, more incentive to deploy thinly, or an added layer of table talk? We've got you covered. However, there's a base scenario called War is Looming with no extra rules at all. 
Mark and the team have played it countless times, and despite not having any particular angles added to it, its lack of surprises still hasn't grown old. Now, with that having been said, Steam Watchers is quite a robust system. Granted, some clans are more difficult than others to handle, but all of them have more or less the same power ceiling. What can and will change the balance of the game is how players choose to deploy relative to their opponents. This is something we knew we wanted, and a place where we strayed from Mark's original design, which was more fixed, as the Rhone always started in the Rhone Basin, and the Catabasians would always start in the Central Mountains, and so on. As such, it was difficult to promote a nomadic sense of movement, which Mark is a huge proponent of, so variable deployment felt immensely better to everyone. Now, as you choose where you deploy, you can choose whether or not you want to stay close to your opponents, or leave ample space as a barrier between you and your nemesis. Some scenarios prevent you from playing one clan or the other to avoid imbalance or to add flavor. The two-player scenario, Raid the Singed, for example, uses the toxic farms from the Minrau, so you can't use that clan. Don't worry, we'll have more news on Steam Watchers next week. And finally, to hell the last saga. Last week, we launched the Pledge Manager and encountered some technical difficulties. All invites have been sent by now, so please make sure you check your email that you used on the Kickstarter campaign to look at the invite and get the link to the Pledge Manager. Now, the Pledge Manager and the late pledges will remain open until September 4th, 2020. Already, an impressive 68% of backers have completed their pledges in the first week, and this is amazing. The rest of you have a bit over two months to complete your pledge. Now, let's discuss a bit about an add-on that has created a lot of conversation that you can find in the Pledge Manager, but it wasn't available during the campaign, and that's the Deluxe Storage System. Hell the Last Saga will come in two boxes, one for all the minis, which will be called the Night Box, and one for all the other components, which is going to be called the Day Box. Now, the Day Box comes with different boxes per song. In each song box, you'll have a cardboard dividers to easily store your components. The Day Box comes with a functional storage solution. It comes with a transparent plastic trays that are 0.6 millimeters thick, along with the cardboard boxes. For the extra pieces, there will also be Ziploc bags and all the cards will fit in the plastic tray. The deluxe box tray that you see on the Pledge Manager is a storage solution that works like an organizer specifically designed to perfectly fit in the component boxes. They're like the trays that you usually buy separately or design yourself for your games, but here it's specifically proposed by us. The premium box trays are made of thermoplastic and designed to perform storage. These are solid, rigid, thick 0.9 millimeter trays, all in black with integrated decorations like logo engravings and thematic decor molded into the insert and covers. So essentially, it's a more luxurious and smarter storage solution. Both the standard and the premium organizer trays will be compatible with sleeved cards. Now, we, we currently don't have an image for the standard organizer that comes with the box, as normally the storage solution is the last thing that is designed production-wise. But when we do have a final count of all the components in the coming weeks, we will be able to show you an in-house mock-up of how it could possibly look. Now, make sure you note that September 4th is the closing date of the Pledge Manager. Lastly, we have a new exciting announcement to make. Check it out. You answered the letter. Now, like me, you are a part of this place. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and while you're at it, play some games. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.